Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to tell you about the six books that I read in October and what I thought of them. So the first three books that I read are from the Ruth Galloway series by Ellie Griffiths and the first one is called The Crossing Places. When she's not digging up bones or other ancient objects, quirky, tart-tongued archaeologist Ruth Galloway lives happily alone in a remote area called Saltmarsh near Norfolk, land that was sacred to its Iron Age inhabitants. Not quite earth, not quite sea. When a child's bones are found on a desolate beach nearby, Detective Chief Inspector Harry Nelson calls Galloway for help. Nelson thinks that he has found the remains of Lucy Downey, a little girl who went missing 10 years ago. Since her disappearance, he has been receiving bizarre letters about her, letters with references to ritual and sacrifice. The bones actually turn out to be 2,000 years old, but Ruth is soon drawn into the Lucy Downey case and into the mind of the letter writer, who seems to have both archaeological knowledge and eerie psychic powers. Then another child goes missing and the hunt is on to find her. As the letter writer moves closer and the windswept Norfolk landscape exerts its power, Ruth finds herself in completely new territory and in serious danger. So I'll tell you what I think about the books after I've told you about each one. So the next one is called The Janus Stone and the Blurb Reads. It's been only a few months since archaeologist Ruth Galloway found herself entangled in a missing persons case, barely escaping with her life. But when construction workers demolishing a large old house in Norwich uncover the bones of a child beneath a doorway, minus its skull, Ruth is once again called upon to investigate. Is it a Roman era ritual sacrifice or is the killer closer at hand? Ruth and Detective Harry Nelson would like to find out, and fast. When they realize the house was once a children's home, they track down the Catholic priest who served as its operator. Father Hennessy reports that two children did go missing from the home 40 years before, a boy and a girl. They were never found. When carbon dating proves that the child's bones predate the home and relate to a time when the house was privately owned, Ruth is drawn ever more deeply into the case. But as spring turns into summer, it becomes clear that someone is trying very hard to put her off the trail by frightening her half to death. So the third book is called The House at Sea's End, and I don't actually have a blurb for it, but I don't really want to say too much because it's going to give spoilers about Ruth's actual story and how that flows through the different books. So each book is a standalone mystery that needs to be solved but like I said she has a story that runs through it and the characters develop and I don't want to give any spoilers about that. But the third book is about six skeletons being discovered when part of a cliff falls down and then figuring out how old they are and what the actual crime was. I really enjoy these books because they're very atmospheric, especially the first one with the salt marsh and the first one and the third one. They're very atmospheric. You can really get a sense of the weather and the conditions and that's what I really enjoyed about it. And I do enjoy that the characters have their story developing throughout the series, separate to the kind of standalone mysteries. I enjoy that the main character Ruth is less than perfect and you know all of her foibles and I like I like her. I like her character, so I would recommend these books. The next book I read is called Silence on the Moor by Deanna Rayborn, and it's book number three in the Lady Julia Gray series. In Grimsgrave Hall, enigmatic Nicholas Brisbane has inherited a ruined estate replete with uncanny tenants and one unwanted house guest, Lady Julia Gray. Despite his admonitions to stay away, Lady Julia arrives in Yorkshire to find Brisbane as remote and maddeningly attractive as ever. Cloistered together, they share the mouldering house with the proud but impoverished remnants of an ancient family, the sort that keeps their bloodline pure and their secrets close. Lady Allenby and her daughters, dependent upon Brisbane and devastated by their fall in society, seem adrift on the moor winds, powerless to change their fortunes. But poison does not discriminate between classes. A mystery unfolds from the rotten heart of Grimsgrave, one Lady Julia may have to solve alone as Brisbane appears inextricably tangled in its heinous twists and turns. But blood will out and before spring touches the craggy northern landscape, Lady Julia will have uncovered a gypsy witch, a dark rider and a long buried legacy of malevolence and evil so this is as I said number three in the series and I liked it but I did get quite annoyed at the way the character was portrayed like Lady Julia is beginning to be portrayed as kind of bumbling and clueless and Nicholas kind of withholds things from her and he's very aloof and superior and I really didn't enjoy that dynamic I mean, I still enjoyed it and I will continue to read the series, but I didn't enjoy it as much as the other two in the beginning. So, 
There you go. If you've read it, I'd love to know what you think. Do you enjoy the Lady Julia Gray series? And what did you think of, of this particular book in the series? The next book I read is called Mind Power into the 21st Century by John Kehoe. This book takes a practical approach giving readers techniques that they can apply to their own lives. This accessible road to personal improvement is simple, easy and straightforward without all the jargon. So this book is about the law of attraction which I know is kind of trendy at the moment. There's been so many books written about it and videos to watch. This book was an easy read, it wasn't too technical, it wasn't very long but it's very inspiring and motivating and I have kind of been putting into practice the law of attraction and I've been watching videos on it and that and I have seen amazing results which I'll tell you about later on but it's been kind of amazing so I did enjoy this book I would recommend it it's a good kind of I guess starter book if you're looking into the law of attraction law of attraction is amazing more on that later and then the last book is called 11 22 63 and it's by Stephen King stay with me now I don't read horror books I have read some of his horror books like when I was a teen my sister used to read them and I've dipped in not for me this is not a horror it is by Stephen King but it's not a horror life can turn on a dime or stumble into the extraordinary as it does for Jake Epping a high school English teacher in Lisbon Falls Maine while grading essays by his GED students Jake reads a gruesome enthralling piece penned by Janitor Harry Dunning 50 years ago, Harry somehow survived his father's sledgehammer slaughter of his entire family. Jake is blown away, but an even more bizarre secret comes to light when Jake's friend Al, owner of the local diner, enlists Jake to take over the mission that has become his obsession to prevent the Kennedy assassination. How? By stepping through a portal in the diner's storeroom and into the era of Ike and Elvis, of big American cars, sock hops and cigarette smoke. Finding himself in warm-hearted Jody, Texas, Jake begins a new life, but all turns in the road lead to a troubled loner named Lee Harvey Oswald. The course of history is about to be rewritten and become heart-stoppingly suspenseful. This book, I believe, is actually an eight-part series. I stumbled onto that and I haven't watched it and I don't know how closely it follows the series, but this was a good book. It felt like a long read. It did feel a bit slow at times and kind of I don't want to give any spoilers away so the way it happens like like the blurb says he goes back in time but there's certain rules surrounding that and of course there's this deadline of the assassination and the time that plays out between him going back in time until the assassination and trying to figure out if Lee Harvey Oswald did operate alone or if there was someone else involved and how to prevent it really really compelling really interesting and of course it's well written as well i really enjoyed the time era and i realized how few books are set in the 1950s or 60s but that kind of era actually becomes almost like another character in the book it was really enjoyable and really interesting and gave a real sense of atmosphere without giving any spoilers away i do want to say that if you like a straightforward tale where everything's neatly wrapped up in a bow and has a happy ending and they all live happily ever after and uh, I don't know if this book is for you. I know Grant wouldn't have enjoyed the ending, put it that way. But I did enjoy the book and, and the kind of slow march to this inexorable end was, was really compelling and it really pulls you along through the story. It's very interesting, there's some twists and turns along the way it's a well thought out premise and I would highly recommend it. So those are the six books that I read in October and what I thought of them. If you've read any of these, particularly the one by Stephen King, I would love to know what you thought of it. As always, I welcome your recommendations, so please leave them down below if there's a book that you absolutely loved and that I have to read. Leave a comment and let me know what it is. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.